Hi, Tamara Kameen here. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a lunch or dinner recipe of um, raw spaghetti and marinara sauce. So we're going to start with the sauce, the marinara sauce. This can be served cold or you can also put it in your dehydrator and let it warm up for a little bit and serve warm as well. So let's talk a little bit about our ingredients to begin with. Of course, we have to have tomatoes. So I've got some beautiful Roma made tomatoes here that I've just done a rough chop to. I've got roughly one cup of basil and one and a half cups of sun-dried tomatoes that have been soaked. From there we have a little bit of olive oil. I've got two tablespoons of olive oil. I've got one tablespoon of lemon juice, two garlic cloves, one teaspoon of Celtic sea salt. You can use uh, just about any salt that you like. Maybe you have a pink Himalayan salt or uh, another sea salt, but a good mineralized salt you definitely want to use. No table salt. Some Italian herbs. These are just some dried herbs that are going to add to our flavorings of the basil. And then for a little bit of sweetness so that we can balance this recipe out, I have a little bit of xylitol here, but if you wanted to use a date, you can use a date as well. And if you're not familiar with xylitol, um, this is a sweetening product that we use that is uh, from a birch tree. Um, and you can get it at most uh, health food stores or you can also buy it online. It looks and it tastes a lot like um, sugar, so it's an easy transition and it's a lot more healthful. And it's not like uh, stevia that has a, that little bit of an aftertaste that some of us don't really care for. Let's get started. So we're going to start with our blender. And we're going to put our ingredients in, except for the tomatoes. We're going to add those last. So we're going to start with our sun-dried tomatoes, our garlic, our olive oil, lemon juice. And just add it all right in there. Xylitol, a little bit of sweetener. Or remember, you can use your date. That works better for you our salt. We're going to need a good pinch of salt. That's why I used a whole teaspoon because our tomatoes kind of need that. And we can taste it in the end to make sure we've got what we need. Our dried seasonings and of course our fresh seasonings. We're going to go ahead and add those into that. Now I'm going to add in on top of this um, a, a few of the tomatoes. This is just going to help to in, uh, get everything moving inside of the blender. So maybe like um, two, two of these tomatoes tops, and the rest I'm going to add in later um, because I like my marinara a little bit chunky, but if you like yours smooth, you can add them all in at the beginning of the recipe. Now for this, you're going to need to incorporate your tamper. Um, if you don't have a high speed blender like a Vitamix or a Blendtec, that's fine. You can use a regular blender. You're just going to have to stop the blender, take the lid off, scrape the sides, push things around about every 10 to 15 seconds because it's not going to move around as much as you uh, are going to want it to in the beginning. Let's go ahead and begin this process. And this is a tamper. It goes in the top of the blended. I'm just going to give you a, a look at that so you can see that it's got a pretty good texture to it. So we're going to work from this point forward um, and put the rest of the tomatoes in. And then I'm going to blend it but not as much. Remember I want it to be just a little bit chunky. I'm not going to turn it up all the way. really all that I personally want. Again, if you want to get more uh, or less chunky, I would say go ahead and uh, blend it a little bit more for yourself. So we're going to go ahead and set that aside for just a moment. 
and we're gonna be working with a corrugate or an Italian squash today. Um, if you like the summer squash, you can use that as well. It doesn't quite have the same flavor and it doesn't work quite as well in my opinion. Um, so let's go ahead and work with this. I'm just gonna cut the top of this off. And I have found a new favorite toy for spiralizing and I'll share that with you guys today. Um, and it's called the Vegetti. And I really like it because it's super easy to use. I can keep it in a drawer. I don't need a whole bunch of cupboard space for it. It works really well and it's easy to clean. Yes, I have had all of the other spiralizing tools and I found this one to actually kind of replace them all just because it's easier for me um, in my lifestyle. I don't have um, a lot of time in my kitchen so I need things to be healthy but I also need them to be convenient for myself and my family. This um, little dandy tool has two settings. One of them is a thin setting, I don't know if you can see that, and one of them is a thick setting. So you just put your, um, your vegetable in whatever setting that you're looking for. And I'm actually going to use the thicker portion of this today um, for our pasta sauce. So, very simple. We're going to take our, our squash in there and we just set it in and I'm going to start to just twist it and you're going to see it coming off the side here and I just keep twisting super easy super simple and just keep going the core will actually come out this side right here so I'm going to keep my hand covered onto it and as you get further down there's a piece of the end piece the end cap to it does uh, allow you to push it in and, and get the rest of it down in there. So you might want to chop these up if you don't like super long spaghetti noodles. The first time I made it I was like, whoa, these are really long. It's got little spikes on the end. Huh? We're just going to stick it in there and keep turning. I did use this with a cucumber and it worked. Sometimes the spiralizing machines won't work with a cucumber because it's a softer vegetable, it works really well with this. So I was happy about that. And see, there's your core. There's a part that we usually gets kicked out with the spiralizers anyway. So it works really well. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so we're gonna set this aside just for a moment. And I'm gonna whip up a cashew Parmesan cheese for you. So we're making our pasta with marinara and we need to make a quick cashew parmesan cheese. So this is one of my favorite recipes to keep on hand for my family as a cheese replacement because we try very diligently to not eat dairy. And all I have in this little mini food processor is about a half a cup of raw cashews, a good pinch of Celtic sea salt, and I got the chunky kind, the kind that'll really help cut that up in there. And I'm gonna add one clove of garlic to that. So if you can see, I have all of that inside the little mini processor. And I just need to process this to get it mealy. Um, I don't want it big chunks, I want it small chunks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my little uh, Cuisinart, and any little bullet type processor will work. For me. One little more second. Just one more second. One more second. Almost there. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna pour this into a bowl so you guys can really see. Uh, and we'll use this in our in our pasta. Okay. So there you have it. Super simple. Super quick cashew parmesan. Okay, so we're ready to plate our pasta. Um, and this was pretty simple, pretty quick. The, the most time that really took for this recipe is chopping up the tomatoes. Everything else went super fast, super quick. I'm gonna take a little spoon here and I'm gonna take some of our noodles. Now remember, these are like one big long noodle because I just kept going. So I'm just gonna take a little pinch here and kind of See what, actually, I'm gonna actually chop a little bit, just a little bit, just so that, you know, it's actually, we're able to eat it. I'll pull a little bit off, 
do a little chop. You can even use scissors for this. See how long this noodle will just keep going and keep going. It'll keep creating a big, big bowl of pasta for you. And these, uh, these noodles taste very, very mild in flavor. I'll put the last little few right on top there. And I'll kind of reserve these a little bit over here for a little side plate. And then I'm going to take our pasta sauce. Now remember, I left it a little bit chunky, but I like it that way. And we're going to spoon it right on top there. A nice helping of sauce there for you. Oh yeah, that looks delish. Yes. Now, our Parmesan. I like Parmesan on my pasta. So we're going to put that on there for you. And there you have it. Super simple. Italian spaghetti with Italian noodles and marinara. Enjoy.